Hi. Now we will be examining the combinational circuit synthesis, which is this. And then th this is a general um, explanation for the combinational circuit synthesis. And then we will be examining uh, a systematical synthesis method for the minimal functions. It is related with canonical forms. So canonical form minimal function synthesis, we might call it. Uh, there's going to be another um, video frame for this. But this, there are two methods. One of them is uh, Queen McCleskey method, which is this one. And the other one is the Carnot Mudd method. But at the end, for both of these methods, at the end, the synthesis that we are going to find is going to be canonical form. Canonical form means sum of product form or product of some form. And we are going to mention the other methods, just the name of them, not going to the details of those methods. And then we were giving some synthesis examples, uh, practical synthesis examples. These are others how you can do, uh, synthesize a uh, adder circuit and BCD access tree converter. This is another practical circuit that we will synthesize. And the last one, we're going to give the uh, just the word description of the synthesis here. So totally, it's going to be one video for this frame, another video for this one the third video for those two, and the last one for the examples. Totally, we're going to have four videos for this chapter. Now, let's go in details. So, we're going to come out of here. Uh, escape. Move it down. And put that open board in. And set up this open board. Okay. Here. You are. So when we say synthesis, uh, what is given to us, we've got to know that, and what we will do in order to get the synthesis of a circuit. So what is given to us is the relation with the input and the output. Assume that this is a circuit here. So let's go in there. Oh, here. If there is a circuit like that, this circuit transfers this input to this output. So that is the definition of this circuit, what it does. It transfers this input to the output, which is already known. So this is what is given to us. And this information is called word description. We are saying by words what input is transferred, which output, by this circuit. Uh, what is inside, if you go in more details, so how many different inputs that you're going to apply to this circuit? To distinguish these different inputs, we've got to determine the number of variables. So this is part of our job in the synthesis business. So it says it's number of input variables required to represent all the possible inputs. So what I mean by saying that, let's say you've got N, capital N, number of dif different inputs. So how many, these are the different inputs. How many input variables do I require to represent or separate these inputs is this log 2 capital N is equal to small n. So that's this number. This is an integer number. That integer number tells me the input variables x1 point point xn. So, 
if I ask you what are the different the, what is the number of different inputs that you can apply by these variables is all these permutations goes up to 1 1 1 0 1 included permutations for these n variables is 2 to the power n okay so the number of different inputs that you can apply is 2 to the n this means this is not this is equivalent information saying that 2 to the power n is equal to capital n okay so this small n is the number of variables independent variables 2 to the power n is the number of different inputs that we can represent or we can separate is 2 to the power n so when this information given to us we know the input variables so the output should also be given by this word description what is the output output so there could be more than one output not just one output so how are you going to separate the number of output variables is just by how many different output that could be observable so if it is just four you need two variables so similarly to this one let's say z1 zp these are the outputs so the inputs maybe I should have written it like that so inputs was this x1 point point xn and goes 0 up to 1 1 1 1 these are 2 to the power n and then if I write z1 up to zp the output these are the dependent variables or the functions dependent variables or outputs so we've got p number of outputs the number of different outputs is 2 to the power p isn't it so this what is this table this table shows us p number of boolean functions truth table these are the truth table so by using the word description i can find out this truth table once we found the truth table the third step that is the truth table and then we are going to determine uh, the elements types and their connections so what is inside the circuit so what is here is related with the inside of this circuit so the num which elements I'm going to use how I'm going to connect those elements together so I've got to get that information from that truth table means you're going to this truth table represent functions so if I write these function as a formula each formula gives me a circuit or the synthesis of this uh, circuit uh, example let's say your function is x1 xor prime let's say this is xor and x3 x4 so this is a formula which represents this one of the variables one of the outputs so maybe you might call it zp instead of f Z I uh, let's let Z K let's say Z K function. So that's to this function. That's the truth table of this function. So if you transfer this function, a formula like that, that formula gives me that information, isn't it? Which elements? So this is X or gate, X nor gate, isn't it? Because of that. This is AND gate and that is OR gate so I determine the elements now once I wrote that formula like that and also I determine the topology what is this topology is this is an n here you are this is XOR this is n 
and sum of the output of those two. So this is the connection topology is known and element types is known. So conclusion is this. We transfer this, we transfer this truth table to functions as a formula. From this formula, we can find out a circuit, realization, that means, isn't it? That is the realization of this function. If you write an equivalent formula for the same function, that means you are s talking about another s synthesis for the same circuit. So let me explain some of the basic uh, criteria that we use in the design operation. Design has got different uh, design. When we say design, we are meaning we mean that synthesis and realization they are all the same. So what are what is the properties? What is the property of the design? Design must be effective, efficient, and reliable. When you say effective, for example, you are talking about the cost, for example, uh, is the criteria for the effectiveness. So if you say that you write this function as a formula in which the number of elements required is minimal, then it is a minimal cost. That's an effective design. Uh, if you say that uh, propagation delay is minimal, so this is another effective criteria. Propagation delay is minimal means, so your response time is smaller, isn't it? So less the number of uh, levels in your design means less the propagation delay time means faster the response of your circuit. So this is another criteria that we could use of for the effectiveness of a design. So a design must be effective. On the other hand, the second term here is efficient. Efficiency, in Turkish, it is called the uh, verim. So the energy that we use to do this operation, that means transfer this input to that output, the amount of energy we use must be minimal. Then it becomes efficient. Efficiency is high. If I give you an, a practical example from an automobile, automobile uh, automobiles, the cars that we use, the, we use the chemical energy, which is benzene. So from this chemical energy, we are going to uh, get the uh, kinetic energy. This kinetic energy is the energy required to run the car. Meanwhile, there is a thermo energy, usul energy in Turkish. So this energy when we get this kinetic energy, at the same, uh, same time we've got a heat energy as well. So this heat energy heats up the engine. But this energy is not the useful energy. It's not my aim to heat up the motor. My requirement is the maximum energy, maximum kinetic energy to get out of this chemical energy from benzene. So that means if the heat energy, consumed heat energy, is not a useful energy. So useful energy is the kinetic energy. So that is what we call efficiency. So if we transfer this information now to our logic circuits, we've got to design, we've got to design this circuit in such a way that the number of integrated circuits that we use must be minimal. Why is that? Because as you know from the lab, we've got integrated circuits. Inside, we've got these gates in it. If we use the minimal number of integrated circuits, the amount of energy that we use, electrical energy that we use to get that transformation from input to the output, 
minimal number of integrated circuit means minimal number of energy we, co we consume. Why is that? Because we know that in order to run these uh, integrated circuits, we need a DC source connected to those. So from this DC source, we are getting the energy. So this energy is the energy consumed by the system. So less this this electric less amount of this electrical energy we use, that means higher uh, the efficiency of our system. And the last uh, criteria for a design is reliability. Uh, these circuits must be reliable. If you run this uh, these circuits in um, tropical area or to run it in uh, poles, it should run. If it doesn't work in one place, then it is not a reliable circuit. So for those, for example, if you are using the mili uh, if this is a military circuit, uh, if you are using this uh, circuit in a military equipment, then the military equipment should run in either you are in the pole or you are in the tropical uh, area on the world, it should run. That means should be reliable. So for those there are special integrated circuits introduced which are called military components. So the, t uh, the coding for these military components is 54. I'll write it here. 54 is military components and 74 is uh, commercial commercial components so these are cheaper than this one so that is related with reliability so I explained here uh, three uh, criteria that we require in order to make a good syn uh, synthesis is effectiveness, efficiency, and reliability. So now these are the steps that we are going to use in the designs that we are going to explain afterwards. Here you are. The, there is an example. So in this example, you see you, a truth table. Truth table is this, isn't it? So in this truth table here, we've got three independent variables we've got two to the power three eight different inputs and these are the outputs that we're going to observe so just by looking here these columns i can say that if i multiply this column with this one that means x1 times x2 gives multiplication gives you this if we get the prime of x3 which is this add them up you're going to get this function so this is same as this isn't it so if you are capable enough to see this relation so you can say that you can write it as a formula like that once you write it as a formula like that then you can transfer it to a circuit so this is multiplication of two elements this is the AND gate and this is x3 prime is an OT gate here and this summation here which is this or is in a summation of this AND gate and this NOT gate outputs is the OR gate so we determine the name of uh, the type of elements that we require to synthesize a function like that and also we've got the topology so the output of those two components is connected to the input to that OR gate so that is what we said before, isn't it? Once you've got the truth table, you're going to write a corresponding formula to that truth table. If you could do so, so that means you have a realization. So if you got any equivalent function formula, which is this fun which is equal to this function, means an alternative synthesis that you could use for this function. This is not easy to apply, a systematic method is required, so this is not easy to see that relation. So there should be a systematic method for that, so it is not effective, this method. 
minimal probation delay means effective design so for it this is this has got two levels that's why it is a minimal so it is a good effective design I might call this minimal power consumption mean minimal cost mean uh, on, it affects the efficiency isn't it efficiency is the minimal power minimal power means minimal number of elements in it so that is minimal cost and there is one thing more here let me move up a very hot cold environment may change reliability of the design I already said that so that was an example but this is not a systematical way of designing of a, sh uh, the, uh, of a uh, boolean function so let's come to the next step so we could use a systematical approach for a design of a given boolean function this is as we know already any boolean function can be written as a sum of product form sum of product form or product of sum form sum of product form is this isn't it each product sum of the product so each product term correspond an end gate so level one and one up to and so we know that any boolean function can be written as a sum of product form the number of product terms in this first canonical form is going to be equal to the number of ones in this function so that means for each one you've got a product term this product term in design correspond an end gate the fan in of it of this end gate is the number of variables so the fan in is going to be n is n so how many and we've got the number of ones in the function tells me this number of end gates what about the or gate It's going to be just one or gate this is sum of products so it's going to be sum of those products so this sum is corresponding to this or gate here so that is a systematic method any function given as a truth table to me or I found a truth table then I can transfer this truth table to a first canonical form function so that means a formula that formula corresponds first level product terms the second level just one or gate uh, first level end gates fan in is the number of variables uh, second level OR gate fan in is the number of ones in the circuit so alternative to this formula is this second canonical form which is product of sums so it's going to be like that sum multiplied these parentheses are going to be multiplied inside the parentheses we've got the sum operations so this is second canonical form so let me change the color so sum of products second canonical form or you might call it or and form isn't it so in this case these sum, each of these sum term correspond an or gate the fanning of this OR gate is going to be n all the variables in it isn't it so the number of sum terms is also the number of OR gates the output of these OR gates is going to be multiplied that's the multiplication operation just one end gate represent this product and the fanning of this end gate is going to be the number of uh, zeros in the circuit isn't it so this each sum term correspond as sum term means this is for each zero for a function there is a sum term so the total number of zeros in a circuit uh, in a function means the total number of all gates that we use in the first level so that is a alternative method isn't it so this sum terms are those and this product representing this end gate 
So this is the systematic approach. So I've got an example for that. Here you are. In the, uh, the, the next one, here you are. You've got, we've got a function. You see, uh, if you write the function as a truth table, it is uh, the number of rows increases and number of columns increases. So this is another representation of function. That means this truth table is known. So that means for the points or the row five, six, seven, the function is equal to one. For five, we've got one, zero, one. For six, one, one, zero. For seven, one, one, one. So this is each one of these is product term. This is first canonical expansion for this function. For each product term, there is an end gate. And fan in is the number of variables here. Fan in, all of them, three, three variables we've got. So these product terms are going to be summed up. This is the sum operation here. Correspond to this or gate. Okay. So we can write the same function is as a sum of products form. A product of sums form. So that is product of sums form. So we've got uh, now zeros, zero representation. This one is zero, zero. Oh, sorry, one, 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 isn't it? You see, if you write zero, so this correspond x1, x2, x3. When the variable value is zero, then variable itself is going to be written here, which is the opposite of this one, isn't it? We already know it, so I'm not going to repeat it for each term. So each sum term here represented by an OR gate. So this with this one, this with this one, with this one, and this one with this one. These are OR gates. For each zero point, I have a, got a sum term, and these sum terms are going to be multiplied here by an end gate, which is this. The end gate fan in is the number of sum terms here, which is five, isn't it? So this is fan in is five here. So this is a systematic method to find a, a design of a function. One of them is sum of product terms form, two level realization, and or realization. If you write the canonical form for this fu given function, so it's going to be once again two level realization. First level we've got OR gates is equal to the number of acre, uh, OR gates is the is equal to the number of zeros in the function, and fan in of these OR gates is going to be the number of variables that we've got in this function, and the Second level element is an end gate. This end gate fan in is equal to the number of zeros of a function. So this is a systematic approach. So at this stage now, we can say that uh, we can say that I can give two different uh, realization for the given function systematically. But we don't know whether it is efficient, effective, or not yet. All we know is this. It is a two-level, so in terms of propagation delay, it is a good design. But the number of elements uh, case, whether it is good or not, we don't know it yet. So second step, it's quite interesting thing here. We've got and or. In here, we've got and or type. In here, we've got OR AND type, isn't it? The second level is AND, first level OR. In here, first level AND, second level OR. So we've got, if you consider these NOTs, for example, this one, so we use AND gate, OR gate, and the NOT gate. So these are the fundamental gates that we normally face. So the question is this, can I do the design by using one type element instead of three here. Uh, so it is true, we could do this. So that's the explanation of this. 
you see here this is an and or operation related first canonical form isn't it first canonical form so it is and or form now what we have done here we, we replace the output of these end gates with a NOT gate we added a NOT gate to the output of these end gates so they became now this is NAND gate isn't it NAND so th there is a NOT operation complement operation here if I use one more complement here nothing would change isn't it so this become equivalent to this one if you've got a not here another not here okay so if do this consider the first level all these end gates are going to be NAND gates so let's consider this one now what we've got here let me draw it here we've got the complement of a variable a prime b prime c prime so summation of those is going to be like this isn't it so what we are saying is this if i replace this with this one so that means we are not going to we're going to use this isn't it so it's going to be like that not the complement A, B, C and NAND gate so that means A times B times C times complement isn't it? NAND so this so this is equal uh, we, know, uh, we know this uh, from a theorem so this is equal to A prime, B prime and C prime which is the same isn't it? So instead of this, I can put this. So look at the conclusion. If I, if you replace all the elements in a first canonical form circuit with NAND gates, there would be no change. So that means you are using one type of element in your design. Why it is important? Because one type element is good for the storage, isn't it? You don't have to store different type of elements in order to use those elements in your design. You're using only one type storage. So that's good from the, in the uh, engineering point of view. The second one, I'm not going to explain this one, but you could do it your own. You can consider the same thing for the second canonical form. But in this case, you're going to replace all the elements with the NOR gates. So in here, we, all these elements are going to be NOR gates. The function is going to be the same function. Nothing would change in terms of the inputs and output. But this, the type of elements, different type of elements that I use is going to be uh, NOR for this case. And it's going to be NAND for this case. For the first canonical form, one type of element is going to be NAND gates. For the second canonical form, one type element is going to be NOR gates. So that's good news, one type element being used. So this is now we gave you a synthesis alternatives that we could give. We could give two different circuits for the same function here. For each one of this, I could use one type of one. So altogether, I've got four designs at this stage. Systematically, I could do that. The question after this is this. It's the, we reduce the type of elements to one we reduce the level just to these are good news what is bad news is this do, do we need all these number of gates in the design can we design the same function by using less number of gates that's the next question 
Okay, so that's the end of this video then.